Influential people, not just no, very noble people and people of high social standing, but also musically. He played string quartets with Haydn, Mozart, and Van Gogh. Now imagine this Mozart playing viola, Haydn playing for violin, and Van Gogh the cellist, and the virtuous of violinist, Dittestorff, Karl Dittus von Dittestorff. Now, who played first violin? <laughs> yes, can you imagine the seats in that room? And they're probably having a little social drink before they sat down. Who goes for that first violin seat? You know, violists, we, we always know, but they're, they're the ones that keep the music and, and, and put in there. Van Gaal, of course, was Dittersdorf's pupil. That's right. Yeah. So who went for that seat? I would, I reckon Ditters, Dittersdorf himself went for that yes. seat. But it is true to say that contemporary accounts of their playing as a quartet suggest that whilst adequate, they were no, by no means exceptional. <laughs> Now, when we came to record the Sinfonia Concitante, and I keep wanting to call it the Grand Duetto, what do you call it? It's just Duetto. Duetto. And it's it, quite grand, though, isn't it? It, it is. I mean, it's just five movements. Yeah. And it was written probably without keyboard to begin with, it was just double bass and viola. Pichelberger, it's assumed, it was written for. And the viola player, I have no idea. You have no idea who it, it was. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. Anyway, um, but there are certain anomalies in these pieces. For example, I couldn't get my head around the slow movement in the Sinfonia Concertante being unison violins and viola, yes. solo viola. And yet, it's such a strange and beautiful effect. It is.
recorded these concertos, it was so important to record them with the orchestra that we'd been working with for so long. Mm -hmm. I've been associated with the Academy of St. Martin in the Fields for over 25 years, and you're a bit of a youngster of this. You've only been there for just over 15 years. Yeah. But I felt, and, and it came through very much when we started recording, that what the Academy offered, and especially under the uh, directorship of Ken Silito, was a breadth of experience and a way of interpreting that kind of music straight away, understanding the language and listening to even first takes coming back of the tutties, you heard a space, a breadth that didn't need to be discussed, it just needed to be honed, played, familiarised and recorded. <laughs> feel that's so integral to that um, early classical style so that the music doesn't come from the edition but comes from the experience of the musicians. Would you agree? Entirely. The Academy has made its name playing music of that period and despite the revolutions in performance since then, that level has never been surpassed. For me it was a real privilege to be able to record with the Academy and especially with Ken directing the orchestra. I can honestly say that in all my life I've never enjoyed orchestral tutis so much. Mm -hmm. I stood there and listened to this wonderful sound and the beauty of articulation, the beauty of phrasing, the clarity of absolutely everything. I was mesmerised. <laughs>
How many double bass concertos did Carl Ditters von Dittersdorf compose? We only know of two, these are the two survive. But we do know that during that period about 250 concertos were written for the instrument. 250 double bass concertos? Absolutely. Minimum. Why? Well, it's quite simple. You know, in the opera, every opera, the tenor gets the goal. In the classical period, which is the bass player... Not in Britain operas. Well, no, in Italian opera. In Britain, you know, it's always... The sexuality is treated very different. But suffice to say that in the opera, the tenor gets the goal. In the classical period, it was the bass player. <laughs> so everybody wanted to be a bass player. And oh. so you have all these wonderful concertos for the bass. And why do so few survive? I think the question... Why do they go out of fashion? That, well, you know, 250 concertos, and we've got two Dittersdorf concertos from the period. Yeah. I suppose when bass players become as attractive to the opposite sex as tenors still are today, we might have a revival of this kind of thing. I just had a rather worrying thought then. Uh, when you mentioned that there were 250 double bass concertos uh, written in, the, in, classical period in the classical period alone, and that we've just recorded two of them, plus the Sinfonia Concertante. If the others keep being discovered, that's going to keep you in recording material till you know, Venus transits the sun again, isn't it, really? Um, is that your intention, or what, what comes next? You've done how many discs now? Nine discs. Nine discs. You're right. I mean, 250 concertos. If you put four per CD, you could keep me busy for a few lifetimes. Yeah. But I'm not going to go down that route. 
of doing just the classical period because it'd be never ending. But I have a I have a plan, but the plan always changes. Mm -hmm.